Hello, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed the panel if you tuned in with a few other thought leaders. But now I am joined with Lorraine Lee, who's going to be sharing her tea method workshop. I'm so excited to have you all here. And we are recording the session in case you miss anything. Um, but let me introduce our speaker, Lorraine Lee. She is the head of the editorial at Prezi, as well as a top rated virtual keynote speaker and leader at the intersection of editorial and tech. She has over 300,000 LinkedIn followers, and she's helping professionals accelerate their careers and build influence in the virtual office. She's also a LinkedIn learning instructor and has appeared in publications including Inc., Read, Write, and Entrepreneur. So on that note, please take it away, Lorraine. Thank you so much, Nova, and welcome everyone. So excited to have you here today. What is the first thing that you do when you get on a video call? Most of us look at ourselves. We want to make sure that our hair is okay and there's nothing weird going on in the background. Essentially, we want to make a great impression. And now that many of us are remote, often the only way our colleagues or clients see us is on video. That makes video really, really important. However, many people still don't know how to use it to their advantage. Today, you're going to learn the essentials for how to present yourself in the best light, figuratively and literally, to get noticed by your colleagues, clients, and peers by making a very strong first impression on video. Before we dive in, I wanna share who I am and why I'm here talking about video. My name is Lorraine Lee, and I am the head of editorial at Prezi, a virtual presentation and collaboration solution being used by the majority of the Fortune 1000 to make their meetings better. I frequently get invited to speak about video and virtual presentations, and I'm also a LinkedIn learning instructor of the popular course, Virtual and Hybrid Meeting Essentials. I was also an editor at LinkedIn for six years, where I worked on its video products and had my own video series. Please connect with me on LinkedIn and feel free to take screenshots at any point during this session, post it on socials and tag me and managing editor so we can keep the conversation going even after the session is over. Speaking of interacting with one another, we'll be using a Slido. You can go to slido.com on your phone or on your browser or scan this QR code, type in this passcode here to enter, that's T. And for those who aren't familiar with Slido, it's an awesome virtual collaboration tool that will allow us to do fun things like polls and word clouds together. For any questions you have about my session, please send them through the big marker Q&A and we'll make sure to get to those at the end. Also, don't forget, there is a fillable PDF that you can download here in Big Marker. Uh, it's in the handout section, so feel free to download it right now, jot down notes, and follow as I go along. Now, let's dive in. I think we can all agree that with all the distractions and things we have to do in a day, grabbing people's attention and keeping their attention is becoming harder and harder to do. That's why the tea method is critical to you making that memorable first impression on camera. What's the first thing you do each, each morning? For many of us, it'll be grabbing a cup of coffee or in this case, tea. The tea method covers the first things you should tackle before jumping onto a video call. The tea method is going to ensure that you appear both confident and competent, and it's going to elevate how the person on the other side perceives you. But what is the tea method exactly? T stands for tech energy, and aesthetics. Let's start with T. Tech is probably one of the more overwhelming aspects of our new virtual world. We have so many new things to think about compared to before in our offices where all we had to do was show up in a room and dial in from a central panel. And even then, sometimes that had its own challenges. So I wanna make the tech part less overwhelming for you. And so I'm gonna share what I view as the basics you need to have an awesome video call. These are personally what I use and they worked very well for me and they don't break the bank, which I think is an important consideration. We'll first cover the hardware you need, which includes a microphone, an external camera, and a clicker. And then we'll talk about uh, software. So let's go to the Slido before we dive in. Let me actually set it up now. So on a scale of one to, ten, uh, one to five, how would you rate your tech setup? Sorry, here I need to click it started. Okay. So it's slido.com, type in the password T, and then you should see the question. How would you rate your tech setup? Five being amazing, one being you have no idea what's going on, you have nothing special. Okay, so it's actually, sp oh, okay, a split between three, four, and five. 
four is winning out, three is winning out. Uh, okay, so a few, 17% said two, 17% uh, said five, and then it looks like a majority are within three and four. So that's great. So we're gonna hopefully move everyone closer to that five. So let's dive into our mics first. Many people will forgive bad cameras, but they will not forgive bad audio. And it sounds like for those who were in the panel before, uh, Doc talked a little bit about the importance of audio. So hopefully this is uh, gonna be an add on here. So I'm sure we've all been on those video calls where every third word the person is saying is choppy and you're leaning in to try to hear what's going on and you just wanna hang up there and then, or maybe their sound is kind of muffled and you're just really straining to hear. It's super frustrating when that happens. And that's why I recommend buying an external microphone. One benefit is that you'll have better sound quality because the microphones in our laptops are not very good. Not only that, but with an external microphone, you can adjust volume and other toggles to ensure that you're getting the best sound based on your voice. And your sound is going to be crisper too. There's also another really practical use for it. Needing to click unmute and mute or even holding down the space bar to speak takes some coordination. And the moment you decide that you wanna say something, there's a lag as you reach over for your mouse and then reach over to click that unmute button. An external microphone is amazing because it's so easy to click mute and unmute with a click of a physical button. And it usually sits on top of the microphone there. It allows a conversation to be a lot more natural and it gets rid of that lag. And especially for my introverts out there, I'm an introvert myself, this is a game changer when it comes to speaking up because you can just move very quickly and not have that lag and delay. Next, let's talk about our hard, our next piece of hardware, which is our external cameras. External cameras are by far, again, one of the best investments that you can make. Similar to audio, our laptop webcams are really bad. They make us look grainy and dark. Now, when I got my Logitech Brio webcam, which is considered one of the best webcams for the price, I instantly felt more confident. I knew I was looking a lot better on camera. I was sharper, crisper, and it just picked up the lighting better. I looked a lot more professional. There was more customization I could do. I could zoom in on my face, adjust the lighting, adjust the colors. It was really great. And this is actually what the Logitech Brio looks like right here. Now, if you wanna spend a little bit more money, you can get a DSLR camera. We've probably all seen those people on calls who look really sharp with that semi-blurred background and they look super professional, they look great. And while these are definitely a step up from a typical webcam, they are significantly pricier. And I think you can still achieve a great look with just the Logitech to start. And I'll also share some software shortly that you can help, uh, that can help you as well with your tech. Let's move on to our next piece of tech, our clickers. A clicker is certainly not a must, but I like to add it here because I do think it can add a lot of value to your video calls when you're giving presentations. Now, ideally when you're giving presentations, your hands are moving to help emphasize your points and convey enthusiasm and energy. When you're doing that though, you might lose track of where the buttons are on the keyboard and you're probably looking down between each slide in order to advance to the next one. Having the clicker in your hand instead of needing to look down and figure out what key to push is going to make you look more professional and confident on camera and just make for a smoother presentation viewing experience. There's also that subconscious effect of looking more authoritative, kind of like the teacher at the front of the classroom or maybe they have a laser pointer or a physical pointer uh, pointing at something. Now, again, this isn't necessarily a must, but I would definitely look into getting one of these if you're ever giving presentations, which I think is a lot of us these days. I use the Logitech Clicker personally, it's the same one here, um, and it works very well for me. Next, let's dive into our software. There are a few key pieces of software I'd recommend to enhance your setup. So Crisp is amazing for blocking out background noise. It works with external mics. I've had someone doing some construction, you know, pretty much right outside my window before. Uh, I've, I've asked people on the call, can you hear that? And they say no. So Crisp definitely works. Camo allows you to use your phone as a camera. So I mentioned the Logitech and DSLR option before, but this is another one that I'd recommend you take a look at too. And of course, if you're using your phone as a camera, you don't need to spend any extra money on the camera itself. Software like Ecamm also gives you additional controls over how your video appears. A lot of live streamers use Ecamm for the customization. And of course, Prezi Video to create more engaging meetings through the content you put on your screen. Now, another key thing when it comes to tech is Wi-Fi. This is often a culprit of bad audio or video quality. 
Ideally, you should be hardwired with an ethernet cord if your home has one, but it's not always possible. For those with unstable internet, which always seems to be the case at the worst moments, check out Speedify, which combines all of your available networks into one super network. So that would include things like your ethernet, your phone network, and more. And I first heard about Speedify from Doc Rock, who was uh, just in the panel session earlier. Um, and he was talking about how to create a really reliable on-the-go production studio. He's definitely an expert, so would highly uh, recommend this here. Let's move over to the Slido now. I'm curious to hear from all of you, what is your favorite piece of hardware and software to use on your video calls? And you can either mention one of the ones that I listed before or something entirely new. Um, selfishly, some of these questions, I'm just trying to learn from the audience as well, if there's anything new I can try. So what is your favorite piece of hardware and software to use on your video calls? Oh, great, someone's using a clicker. That's awesome, I love my clicker. Anyone else want to add anything? Good camera, wonderful. Blue Yeti mic, that's a very popular one as well. A Rode microphone, Zoom blur. Amazing, so I'm going to keep this open, keep typing as you think of things, uh, and I'll check this out later. So this is the tech por portion. Let's move into the next part of the T method. And that would be energy. Your energy consists of many different things, not just whether you feel awake and alert for the video call. So today we'll talk about the importance of your introduction, finding a moment to reset, eye contact, and smiling. So let's start off with your intro. People make a first impression of you in as little time as a few milliseconds and in as most as a few seconds. So that is not a lot of time at all. This first impression is going to be heavily influenced by your energy. So I want to share a few tricks that will help. The first is to remember that your mood matters. Even though we're on video, people can sense if we're feeling agitated, tired, or uncomfortable. In fact, these feelings are probably even more magnified on video because any positive emotions or facial gestures don't come through as well as they do in person with this barrier of the screen. So in order for them to come through, we have to put in a little bit of extra work. Now, one way to counteract being seen as having negative or even neutral emotions is to think of a good or funny memory before joining a call. So let's actually take a second as a group to think of something that made us laugh or smile in the past week. Hopefully we can all think of something. All right, were you able to think of one? If not, maybe these little guys, our little guests today can help. When you thought of that memory or you looked at these animals, I hope you smiled a bit more and felt a bit lighter. And it's that kind of energy that we want in your calls and showing up on your, on your face to create that strong first impression. So do this a few seconds, a minute before the call, kind of internalize it and bring that energy into the call. Next, you'll wanna also think about what you're saying when you're introducing yourself on calls. Starting off a call with questions like, how are you? Can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Those aren't going to be the ideal way to start off a video call. They're pretty generic, they can make you seem unprepared, and they don't help you stand out because we hear these questions all the time. How about changing those questions to ones like, it is great to see you, it's been a while. I'd love to hear what you're most excited to be working on right now, versus how's work going, busy? What was the highlight of your weekend instead of how was your weekend? Most people respond with good. Or are you watching any interesting shows? What do you recommend? Questions like these break up the monotony we usually experience when joining calls and they awaken the brain out of autopilot. If you can be that person to help turn small talk into interesting conversations, you're naturally going to connect better by learning more about each other and you're instantly going to become more memorable. Now I wanna hear from all of you again. Let's head over to the Slido and share how we are starting off calls. So are you starting off with a typical, how are you? Or something besides, how are you? Oh, great, 100% so far. Something other than, how are you? Okay, a few people, how are you? So for those who, I guess for anyone who's saying, if you're asking, how are you? Or you're saying something else, come over to the big marker chat and let me know what kind of questions you're using to start off your calls. And maybe you can help inspire some of us uh, who are looking for ideas. 
Melanie, it's great to see you. Thank you, Mary Ellen, for calling out. Javier mentioned in the panel that it's better to be original, definitely. Any other questions that people like to ask or ways that they like to start off calls or introduce themselves? What's new today? Oh, I like that. What's new with your company? A happy good morning. Sebastian, been a minute, my friend. Oh, these are great. Keep typing them. I'm going to review the chat later. Probably take a few of these uh, for myself for my next call. So thank you, everyone, for sharing. Lastly, make sure the language that you're using to start off the call is inclusive. Find opportunities to use people's first names and use language like we, our, and us. Humans, we love hearing our names. It makes us feel a sense of belonging and connected with the person saying it. And it also recaptures attention if someone is zoning out and it brings their focus back into the meeting. There's also benefit to using collaborative language. If you feel like you're part of something and part of a group, you're likely going to be more motivated to contribute and bring your best self into the discussion. And there's also research behind this. So according to research published in the Harvard Business Review, people who used I statements were typically more junior, whereas the confident leaders, they didn't always feel the need to call attention to themselves. And in fact, their goal was to call attention to the collective group or team. And I think we all wanna be viewed as leaders here. So again, more collaborative language is better. When it comes to language, the key takeaway here is that by being thoughtful about the words we use and the questions we ask, we have the opportunity to really stand out and make that lasting impression. And we all have access to words, so it's just about getting more creative with them. Next, you'll want to make sure that you're leaving time for yourself to reset in between calls. And this is also something I've been working on as well lately. With the move to virtual, we are hopping from meeting to meeting to meeting with no breaks. It's back to back without giving us a chance to breathe and context switch. And as a result, we go into meetings more frenzied and agitated, trying to respond to our emails and slacks quickly before the next call. I know this has happened to me many, many times. I'm sure it's happened to you as well. So the solution for this is to end meetings five minutes early ahead of the half hour or hour to give yourself this time to refresh and recite yourself. So one recent step I took is I changed my calendar scheduling link for external calls to 25 minutes instead of 30, and it's actually been a really huge help. I'm also doing this now for internal meetings. Now in that five minute break, I sometimes look outside the window and away from my computer to give my eyes a break. A quick stretch is also an amazing idea to make sure you're coming back refreshed with that good energy again. I also want to call out here, when you're ending the meetings five minutes early, make sure you're ending at this set time. So I find it helpful to call it out as I get closer with a phrase like, I know we only have a few minutes left. I want to be respectful of your time. Is there anything else you want to make sure that we cover within these uh, last few minutes? So let's move over to the Slido again. How many of you are ending your meetings five minutes early? So you're either ending them five minutes early, not yet, or you're trying. Because sometimes time management is hard. It takes a little bit of practice. Okay, looks like the winner so far is no, not ending the meeting five minutes ahead of the half hour or even 10 minutes ahead of the hour for those longer meetings. Okay. Okay, it's a good, so the majority are saying no. So this is something very easy that you can start implementing soon. And then it's a mix between people definitely already doing it and then some of you trying to do it more often. So that's wonderful to hear. Next, let's talk about eye contact. You should always aim to be looking at the camera or right below it. In person, we make eye contact to boost oxytocin, which is that social feel-good hormone. So let's try to recreate that online too. We want people to feel connected to us. It's hard though to make eye contact on video because it's human nature to want to look at ourselves to make sure that we look okay. Or sometimes we like to look at ourselves to see how we look reacting to something. But, but as best as you can, fight this urge. And I really recommend turning off self view to help with this. It also helps uh, eliminate that video fatigue when you turn off self view. Now, I see a lot of presentations and video calls where people are looking kind of sideways at their content like this when they're presenting, or sometimes they're talking at an entirely different monitor because their camera is there, but your video is here. And when they do that, it looks like the person is distracted or disengaged. And just imagine if I was you know, talking about the session, doing this session, looking here this, this whole time, it would not feel very good. Um, and when I look like that, it looks like I'm distracted or disengaged. And of course, the audience is going to feel that way too, because if they think that you're not paying attention, why should they? 
So as best as you can, look right below the camera or at the camera, depending on uh, your camera height, so that the person on the other side feels like you're looking at them. And then you also can uh, build that oxytocin, that social connection hormone with them. The next and last tip I have in this energy section is to smile. When you get ready to make a presentation or get on video to meet someone new, you might experience any one of these super fun emotions as nerves and anxieties build up. When I used to give uh, my first few keynotes or sometimes on calls, I you know, used to feel like this. Now, if I had let those expressions be the main ones in my presentation and I was talking like this the whole time and just nervous and fear in my eyes, the audience probably would not have enjoyed it very much. Instead, when we smile, the person or people on the other side of the camera see that we're enjoying ourselves and we're excited about what we're talking about, and it's going to encourage them to feel the same. You'll notice too that when you smile, our voices sound more positive and they become lighter. You probably heard that a smile is contagious and it applies to virtual presenting and video communications as well. A smile is going to lift your mood and the mood of those around you. Now, similar to eye contact, remembering to smile took me a little bit of practice, uh, especially when I started doing more of these keynotes. But once I got more comfortable presenting and being on video, it really made a huge difference in how my audience connected with me and engaged with the presentation. And I still remember I presented this one time and someone even called out in the chat without me prompting or even talking about smiling that they liked how much I was smiling and it made them excited to watch. So just know that it does have an impact on your audience. Next, let's move on to the A of the T method, aesthetics. Aesthetics are not just about how you look, but also how the world looks around you and how all those things combine to make a first impression. So in this section, we will cover lighting, your environment, your framing, and your clothing. So let's start off with lighting. Believe it or not, confidence can be greatly impacted by lighting. And lighting is really, really easy to fix, but for some reason, it's often an afterthought for most people. So let's see this in action here. When we look like this, it's distracting, it's unclear, and it probably doesn't leave the other side with the best impression of you. I know when I see myself with bad lighting, I don't feel good about how I'm appearing. Lighting is going to make you look more put together, brighter, and more professional. So I recommend getting ring lights, ideally at least 12 inches to 16 inches in diameter, or maybe try a soft box or photo box. That's what the middle one here is. Um, you know, they use them in photo studios. Um, so in my setup, I actually have two ring lights on either side of me. I have the soft box, which has multiple color options, which is a good thing to look into, um, depending on your makeup and the lighting of the day. Uh, you might want to switch the different types of lighting. And then I actually have, <laughs> I'm a little bit extra, I have two uh, additional soft boxes on the side here just to light up the background a little bit. Now, by no means do you need all of these lights. I've just built it up over time, but at least you want that light in front of you to, to light up your face. For those who are lucky enough to have windows in their workspace, natural light is actually gonna be your best option and even better, it's free. So you should ideally have the window in front of you so that the light is shining directly onto your face. No matter what light source you end up choosing, always remember that it needs to come from the front and never the back. If it comes from behind you, you're going to look like you're in some sort of uh, true crime documentary and we don't want that to be our lasting impression on our video calls. Next up, let's talk about curating our environments. Having a well thought out curated environment is going to give a more professional look and feel to your presentation. And similar to lighting, if you look more professional, you're gonna be more confident with how you're coming off. And when you're confident, people view you as more competent. So this here, this is probably something we wanna avoid. It's pretty messy. And before I moved into this apartment, actually it was two apartments ago now, I was in a studio and my desk was literally right up against my bed. It was the only place I could find that would fit the desk. And I always felt very self-conscious on video calls, wondering were people paying attention to me on the calls? Were they looking at my strange background? And spacing issues like these, they can't always be helped, but if you are in a similar situation, I would recommend buying some sort of room divider or I had a coworker who hung up a curtain behind him. I thought that was a really creative solution. And with hacks like these, you can at least give the illusion of a proper workspace, and it's going to make you feel more confident about how you're appearing on camera. My recommendation, if you're kind of figuring out your space for the first time, is that simpler is better. 
So when you are starting off a clean background like Jessica is using here, usually works best so that you and your content don't get lost and so people don't get distracted by what's going on behind you. But once you get more comfortable with your background, you can start getting more creative with it. If there are any NPR fans in the audience, you might recognize Guy Raz. You can see he's outdoor for his videos. It looks very creative and he's getting all that natural light that I mentioned earlier is the ideal type of light. Or I love this example here by Ted. She's a body language expert. She has a white wall behind her, but she only had two plants behind her, um, but she had all of this natural light. You can see the, the color of the plants was really beautiful. There are kind of purple flowers there. I took inspiration. I have this purple pot here. Um, and just the colors really popped and it made her look very professional with all that light, but also really personable. And I think that's the perfect combination that probably many of us are striving for on our video calls. So some great examples here for you to get inspired by. Now, fun fact, I used to call this section curating your background, but I think with all of the advances that we're seeing in tech and how people are up-leveling their video calls, curating your environment is a more accurate description of what someone really needs to do to stand out and impress. Now at Prezi, we are seeing a lot of companies and customers creating a true virtual experience on their video that is going to contribute to their overall presence and professionalism. So here's an example of showing how you can have both a great background, a physical background, and your video environment becomes even more impressive once you add on-screen visuals. In this case, I have a simple name tag and company logo. This here, this is an example of truly curating the whole virtual and physical environment on camera to create the strongest video impression possible. This here, this is extremely valuable real estate. It's not too much space. So we need to ensure that we're making the most of it to be noticed and to stand out. Let's move back to the Slido now. What is one thing that you might want to change either in your, um, in your environment, either in the physical aspect or the virtual aspect moving forward? I know I just moved into this apartment about two weeks ago, so I'm still kind of building out my setup again. It's fun to, to start from scratch. Um, would love to hear what all of you are thinking of for your background as well. Maybe I'll get some ideas. Okay, someone wants to get better lighting. Someone wants to try getting a green screen, changing the orientation of their desk. Wall is too dark, great, interesting. Yes, you can definitely brighten that up. Maybe some plants, maybe some artwork. Um, the entire thing, LOL, wonderful. There's some clutter, curated environment with a clean, soft background. Amazing. Keep typing away. Again, I'm going to look at this later. All right, now that we've covered our environments, let's talk about framing. So this is what I often see when people are on video. With this angle, I get to maybe see up your nose, underneath your chin. And while it's great to see your face, this is a bit too uh, close and frankly, it's kind of uncomfortable to the other side and it's super interesting. There's actually a scientific reason for this. People skills expert Vanessa Van Edwards says that this is because this feeling of being too close on camera replicates what we might feel in person when someone gets into our personal space. Our brain's reaction is to think that this person could potentially harm us and it activates our amygdala, which processes fear. And fear is not a feeling we wanna be giving people on video calls. Being this close is also an issue because it makes it harder for the other side to stay engaged with you when they are talking to just a floating head with no movement or space to give their eyes a break like we have in normal in-person interactions where we can maybe look off to the side or look at our notes. On video, we are just looking straight ahead and this is just overwhelming to, to see your face up close like this for a long period of time. So your video should ideally show your shoulders and a little bit of your torso and with a little bit of space above your head. So maybe about three fingers worth. So on the, the full video, it's about three fingers. If you know, I was in this frame, it'd be about here. And when you can do this, you are no longer just a floating head. And the person on the other side will feel more like they're having that in-person conversation with you because they can see your body movement and hand gestures. And again, they have this space now where they can move their eyes if they need a little bit of a break. So let's do a quick group activity now to check whether we all have the right distance from the camera. So everyone, please stick out your arm. You want about an arm's length of distance between you and the camera. If you have less than an arm's length of distance, you're likely too close. 
So make whatever adjustments you need so that, again, you want to show a little bit of your torso um, and then have a little bit of space above your head. Now, feel free to use a laptop stand, use books, use delivery boxes, whatever you find around you. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, but just make sure your camera's at the right height and also the right distance um, away from your body. We are now moving into the last part of the T method, which is our clothing. At quick glance, all these outfits look more or less okay, but we'll want to avoid these first two. Why? The white in this first image blends into the background. This person doesn't stand out. For the person with the stripes, stripes often move on camera, same with other patterns on shirts. It's a weird phenomenon, but if you, you'll notice it next time you wear a shirt with stripes. Make sure to always check yourself on camera before jumping on an important call to make, your make sure your clothes work well. One other thing to keep in mind is to avoid wearing colors that match too closely with your skin tone. Otherwise, it'll look like you're not wearing anything. Now, the two people on the bottom here, they have it right. Aim for jewel tones, deeper colors to help you pop out against your walls and stand out. So those would be colors like emerald, ruby, magenta. There are a lot out there. Uh, you can do a quick search online and get inspired by many different colors that would work on your calls. Now, a lot of people ask me about what to wear on the bottom half. It doesn't matter to me. I think sweatpants are perfectly fine if you feel comfortable. And just as long as you look professional on top, I think that's what matters. Now, believe it or not, we have covered the whole T method. So I want to do a quick recap to make sure everything sticks since that was a lot of information. For your tech, you'll want to ensure that you have the necessary hardware with a microphone, external webcam, and a clicker. You'll also want the right software to enhance the tech that you do have. For your energy, you'll want to focus on your intro, resetting yourself between calls, eye contact, and smiling. And for aesthetics, you'll want to work on your lighting, curating your environment, proper camera framing, and your clothing. If you found this helpful, again, please connect with me on LinkedIn, ask any follow-up questions that come to your mind later on, happy to answer them there. Um, feel free to subscribe to my newsletter for more quick, actionable tips for how to stand out and thrive in the virtual office. And I'd also appreciate any feedback. It will be very quick, less than a minute of your time to help me continue improving this keynote and helping others. And with that, let's bring it into Q&A with the amazing Nubba. Thank you so much, Lorraine. I just want to say I loved how you broke this down into like the T method and you had this whole acronym for it. It was so engaging to just watch you go through it. Um, and we had a lot of comments and questions come in through the chat. So before we dive into the Q&A, though, I just want to give one more reminder to please put it in the Q&A section so I don't miss it and I can make sure we ask Lorraine. All right. So let's start off with the first question. Actually, we had two summer similar questions from okay. Lionel and Elisa. And mm -hmm. they're both wondering, how do you set up your like teleprompter so that you're looking directly at your mm -hmm. camera and being able to maintain that eye contact? Yes, great question. So that's one of the amazing things about virtual is that we can have notes and, and it's just a little bit easier to present, especially if we get nervous. So in Prezi Video, there's something called presenter notes and they actually sit right on top um, of the screen or I guess on top of my video, which is right under the camera. So that's uh, a good way to, to have my notes there. There's also teleprompter tools out there. Um, I know some people use sticky notes, maybe physical sticky notes to remind them of the main points they want to talk about. But for me, it's the Prezi Video presenter notes feature. Thanks. Um, you, you mentioned like the sticky notes and other teleprompter tools. Is there anything else you recommend? We had people also asking, you know, how do you make sure you maintain this eye contact if you're not using a presentation or you're not using yeah. Prezi video? Yeah, it's, it's, it is hard because you're, you know, you want to look at naturally at people's faces. That's what our eyes are drawn to. So one, it just takes a lot of practice. Um, I know some people have put a sticker or like a, like a neon sticker to, to help them focus. Um, one other idea that I think can be helpful is take a photo of someone, um, either the person you're going to be talking to, or if that person makes you nervous, just someone who, who makes you comfortable, who makes you smile, stick it on the wall behind your monitor, um, close behind your camera, and kind of, you know, act as if you're talking to them. And that should hopefully help focus the eye contact as well. Nice. I, I like that tip a lot, actually. Yeah, I have to do that as well. When you were showing like the the animals on there, I was like, oh, that's something that would be good to have behind my camera. Yeah, that's, yeah. always make me smile. The animals, yeah. 
Um, we have a couple questions also asking, you know, how you were able to create the emojis and assets. I did mention in the chat that we, you are using Prezi video, but if you want to share a little more about how you put together your presentation, that'd be great. Sure. Yeah. So I use um, our Prezi present product. So I built the presentation and then when you import it, so I built everything on the right hand side of the screen here. And then when you import it into Prezi video, um, the background drops out and then you get to appear um, amongst your content. And so I, the stickers, um, GIFs, um, any kind of emojis or visuals, um, you can find them within Prezi. And so I just selected them from there. Um, I had designers help me as well with some of this branding. Um, but like this, this slide, for example, is something you could create on your own using visuals uh, within Prezi. And so um, that's that's how I built this. Awesome. And we have a question along the same vein from Kabuika. She's asking, can you add a screen label even when on a Zoom meeting? So basically, how can you use Prezi video with the lower mm -hmm. third in a virtual meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. So yes, this is, you know, this takes a little bit um, more planning and preparation. I, I knew I had this session today. However, we have a functionality where you can hop onto a Zoom meeting, WebEx, Teams, etc. Uh, open up the Prezi video app, and then you can type and add images and stickers and, and GIFs um, right on screen in the live meeting in real time. And so we call those on-screen responses. Um, I know Neva and myself in meetings, we like to use those frequently just to you know show support for someone, or we don't want to break up the discussion by chiming in, but we just want to show we agree. We give you know a big thumbs up emoji that sits here. And so that feature is really fun. Um, you can also type your name as well and title, um, and it'll show up on the screen. And uh, you can also cycle through content all in real time and built through Prezi video. It's super easy. Yeah, that's my favorite part being able to put like a little gif or a sticker up just to like show my reaction because then you know sometimes it gets a laugh sometimes you get a smile and it just it yeah. keeps everyone way more engaged yeah, and it helps, helps you connect too i know um i love the show Shit's creek and anytime there's a Shit's creek gift you know people um they smile or they they yeah. message you after they're like oh i didn't know you were a fan as well so there, yeah. it also provides that moment to connect with each other mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Really great point. Um, along those lines, we have a question from Justin, and he's asking, what would you say about the use of humor in video meetings? It seems like much more of a risk of flopping on a virtual setting than in person. Yeah, I think I think if you want to try, why not? I mean, I, I don't try to inject humor into my meetings and presentations unless it feels very natural. I wouldn't consider myself like a very, you know, naturally funny person. Um, but I think if you kind of want to try or you feel like it's natural to you, go for it. I think as long as it's natural and genuine, it, it's probably going to come off uh, positively. So I say, why not? Yeah. And I mean, you know, what you were just referencing with like the gifts, like there are ways to inject it like a little yeah. bit without going too far. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely. All right. Our next question is from Tracy. And you mentioned this a little bit when you were talking about looking directly in the camera. Um, but they say, I always look like I'm looking to the side on camera. So how can I center myself so it looks like I'm looking straight ahead? Yeah, I wonder if maybe the camera, Tracy, is off center um, for your setup. And what I would recommend is, and this is what I do as well whenever I um, when I got this camera, is use, um, use Zoom or even Prezi video or, or just some sort of video recording um, tool and just practice talking. And like I, I would do like, I would just talk here. I would say, okay, I'm talking in position one, talking in position two, talking in position three. And then I can kind of get a see in the recording, like which one looks like I'm looking most directly at the camera. And so it might just take some finagling and testing. But I think if you kind of do those tests, it sounds like maybe your camera is just a little bit um, off in the wrong side. And that sounds like it'll be an easy fix for you. Yeah, I know for myself, even just like whenever the light changes outside, I'm always like moving around my camera. So it's one of those things where I yeah. feel like you kind of have to constantly adjust, but it, it ends up making a big difference. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, our next question is from Michael. Do you have any tips on avoiding looking at yourself while in meetings and focusing on the other attendees instead? Yeah, so I, I referenced this earlier. I think turning off self view is a huge game changer. And I know it feels kind of uncomfortable because you're used to looking at yourself and if you're not on camera you're like oh my god how, how am i looking to people but it it'll only take a few minutes for you to kind of get adjusted but i think turning off self view it really helps with video fatigue you, you will notice that 
the space in your mind, you just have more space to focus on what's actually going on versus looking at yourself. It's, we don't even realize how many times we're looking at ourselves when we're on, on a Zoom call. And so um, definitely just turn off your self view and, and you'll notice that you'll be able to focus a lot more on, on the conversation at hand. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. This is something that I struggle with. I think I've, I've tried taking self view on and off and like, yeah. I, I have noticed a difference, but you know, even talking with you right now, I'm like, I can see my expression. So I'm like really trying to just focus ah, on yeah. my yeah. contact. Yeah. So yeah, trying mm -hmm. to remember all the tips you shared. <laughs> Um, okay, our next question is from Naomi. So they say, I often do Zoom interviews with folks around the world who have really low quality cameras. What are your non-negotiable, almost must-have tips for presenters, no matter what equipment you're working with? Yeah, great question. I think audio is more important than video quality. Um, just because if you can't hear the person, I mean, what's what's the point of the call, right? At least if, even if they have bad video, you can still kind of see what's going on. So audio would be one. Um, I would say video would be, would be secondary. And then, I mean, I think that would be non-negotiable and everything else I, I shared is, you know, I mean, everything I would, I would consider that like you, you should have, um, but like things like lighting, the right framing, I mean, you don't like need it, but it helps a lot. And so I, I think it should be considered kind of a must have for everyone moving forward in, in our virtual environment, virtual offices, um, but it's not necessary, but you know, let's just assume everything in the team method is necessary. These are what I consider to be the basics. And so, you know, it's gonna take a few, a little bit of time, maybe you go step by step, um, but if you can kind of get these basics down, you're gonna be really set up for success. Nice. Um, I actually have a follow-up question to that. Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned audio is like the main thing. So if someone, let's say, you know, they have like a lower video quality and maybe it's even to a point where it's distracting, would you say it's better than for them to turn off their camera and, you know, just be able to speak and have that yeah. engagement with the audience or should they keep the camera on? I think so. I think that would be that would be best if your video is is detracting from the conversation. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me about virtual backgrounds. I, I kind of have the same opinion of those. Um, you know, on video, our brains are already working over time to kind of interpret the person's um, tone and, and facial gestures and just trying to, you know, and understand what's going on. It takes a little bit more extra work than than it is in person. That's why there are things like Zoom fatigue, video fatigue. Um, and when you have a virtual background, it's just, it's an, another added layer of unnaturalness where, you know, people are moving, then things appear in the background, their hand disappears all of a sudden, like half their face is gone. And that's, it's just making the, the other side work really hard. And so I think as, and I went a little bit off topic here, but as best as you can, you know, yeah, have your video on, have the natural environment, don't add any extra complications that requires the brain to work overtime and kind of put together the pieces. You want it to be as natural um, and as smooth as possible. Right. Yeah. And I appreciate that you brought up the virtual backgrounds because, yeah, I feel like I didn't even realize how much of a distraction they can be, but yeah, especially when you like, the hand moving and then the head and you see like the little blurriness. Yeah, that, that immediately draws your eye to it and you kind of tune out away from what they're saying. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so our next question is from Annabelle. How can you get good lighting without reflection from their glasses on camera? Because that can be very distracting. Yes, I get that question a lot, Annabelle. So I would recommend if you are wearing glasses, try not to get ring lights because I feel like ring lights have the most, um, are, are the most likely to appear in glasses. If you do have ring lights, try, Lifting, lifting them up a little bit higher and having them kind of come up from the top here versus just straight on. Um, I think the softbox is sounds like a good option for you. There's kind of a diffuser there and I think it's less likely to have um, that reflection. And again, just try to make the lights come from a little bit higher up so that you're not getting that reflection. And then uh, with your monitor, turn the, uh, turn the lighting down a little bit to try to avoid the glare from the monitor as well. But that's a good call out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's another distraction that might happen in video calls. Yeah, we, we got a few other people saying like plus one to that question because they yeah. also had it. So thank you. Yep. Yeah. Um, our next question is from Kubika and they're asking, should standing up be the way to hold all meetings? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it depends. I I would err on the side of standing up um, just because when you stand up and I, I have a, a separate five-step attention framework where I talk more about standing up, but it does 
give your presentation more energy. So that was, that was a good call out. Um, it kind of gives you more freedom to move your hands. When you're sitting in a chair, often we become very slumped and relaxed and we keep our hands on our laps or on our um, keyboards. And so there's not as much hand gestures and, and things like that going on. Um, but standing up gives you more freedom. Um, it just, you know, you look more confident, you can stand up with better posture. Um, you know, sometimes people have been standing all day, they're tired or they can't stand for whatever reason. Um, you can sit in, your, in the chair still and, and a little hack I have is to scoot on the front half of your chair and that way you can't lean back and be slumped and you'll sit up straight. Okay, nice. Um, so it looks like a lot of our next questions are about Prezi video. So okay. um, I think we can touch on a few of them, but I know some of them, we can also send them to the resources we have. Yeah, yeah. And um, so the first one is from Sebastian mm -hmm. and they're asking, can you import your own content images or do you have to use Prezi graphics? Yes, you can. So you can import your own graphics images. You can import PowerPoint um, decks, um, any any slides that you have, Google Slides, um, and your your slide. It'll be bigger than than this here, but this will kind of be the shape of the slide, and it'll just sit right here next to you, and it you you know cycle through like I've been doing with my content here, and you can also zoom in and out on the slides as well. And you can yes, also bring in custom custom graphics that you create. Yeah, like the all like my presentation and Lorraine's. Well, I guess my one frame is all custom made. <laughs> yeah. Um, our next question is from Lionel, and they're asking when they use Prezi in Zoom, the video quality can sometimes lower a bit. Do you have any tips to make the quality better? I know we have a support article that we can share that has more of the in-depth um, instructions, yeah. but Lorian, if you have any tips right now, feel free to share. Sure. Yeah, I you know I don't think it's a Prezi video thing, I th I think when um, sometimes Zoom just just throttles, um, you know, because of internet connection. But I think one thing that you can do, and what I did for this session, is save your Prezi video content to the desktop, and then when you bring it into Zoom, it's pulling from the desktop versus having to kind of stream and take through take from um, Prezi video over your connection. So saving to the desktop locally and then using that um, within Zoom, I think makes a makes a big difference. Awesome. So our next question is from Kimberly, and they're asking, how would you use Prezi video when multiple people at different locations need to present? Good question. So I think you're asking about co-presenting, which is a much asked about feature, um, you know, to come. But I think for now, what we recommend and when Naba and I present the same thing, um, we both have our, the presentations pulled onto our screens. And then um, we will just, when Naba's talking and maybe she moves through a few slides and I have a panel here, I can see all the slides um, that are in the presentation. I might just, for example, I can go backwards. I can, you know, skip back here and then start start where she left off. Um, so that would probably be the best way for now. Nice. Um, and then I think you mentioned this earlier, but Elisa's wondering what camera and audio or mic are you using? So just yeah, so I, remind yeah, you. Yeah, I didn't mention the mic. So the camera I'm using is a Logitech Brio 4K camera. And for audio, I'm using um, a microphone I got from Amazon. It's called, um, well, it's spelled F-I-F-I-N-E. Um, it allows me to adjust volume. Um, I know Blue Yeti, I think, has a few more additional features, but um, it's significantly more expensive. So, I mean, this microphone, hopefully my sound all, sounds good to all of you. It works perfectly fine with me. I think, Naba, you have this mic as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I love it. And it's nice because it has the physical button, so yeah. you can like, mute yourself without mm -hmm. having to like scramble to find it on virtual calls. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. So our next question, we're shifting a little bit away from the tech side of things and okay. more to the meetings. Uh -huh. So our question is, if you, even if you have an agenda and you're aiming to like end meetings five minutes early, five minutes early, like you recommended, uh -huh. what if you seem to just keep going over time, what would you recommend in these cases? Yeah, I think if you're the facilitator, I mean, obviously you have more control over that. So if you find that your meetings are running over, I, I would still end the meeting five minutes um, early. Or if you're going over the five minutes, just call it out and acknowledge that, you know, you're going over time and you want to be the, the, the reason is you want to respect your coworkers time. Um, in terms of uh, ending at the right time. And so acknowledge that you're going over. And then if that keeps becoming a habit, I think you, it sounds like maybe the meeting needs to uh, run more than 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. Um, if you're a participant, I think hopefully you have a, a culture of um, 
transparency and you can just mention to the facilitator that you often have meetings afterwards or things scheduled that you have to get done. Um, maybe you can offer to help facilitate and keep everyone on track. Um, I have another keynote all about meetings. And so one of the other things I would recommend is with your agenda, I'm not sure if you're already doing this, but break down the exact times like 9 a.m. to 9.05 a.m., 9.05 to 9.15 with exactly what you want to talk about and what you want to get done during that time. And that will also keep the meeting structured and not let conversations get off track. And like you're talking about one thing for 20 minutes and you still have three other things to talk about. So I think having a very uh, specific um, agenda is going to help a lot as well with that. Awesome. Great tips. And I think we were discussing this earlier, Lorraine, but how you can get so drained when you have back-to-back -back meetings. So like yeah everyone really does just need that like five to 10 minutes to just like breathe, like get some yeah. water in between meetings so that they can like shift their focus. Cause yeah, if you're just go, go, going, you know, like you said, yeah, you're trying to answer slacks and emails like right before you're just kind of frazzled when you enter yeah. each meeting. Um, exactly. So you're not fully focused, but mm -hmm. yeah, good tip. Um, okay. Our next question is from Hillary. Mm -hmm. So they struggle with keeping eye contact because you know, you want to stare directly into the camera lens, but yeah. it can feel less personable because yeah. you're not able to look yeah. at the attendees. And yeah. I mean, I also struggle with that. I feel like I'm constantly looking down because I want to be able to see their expressions and see their faces. Um, so what do you recommend for like being able to watch your attendees, but also maintaining that eye contact? Yeah, I think um, that and that is one of the challenges with eye contact in a virtual world. Um, one thing I like to do is I try to move my zoom um, screen right below the camera and try to shrink the screen a little bit, you know, gallery view, try to shrink the screen a little bit so that um, all the boxes are kind of, you know, more visible within my peripheral vision. And I think, you know, take advantage of your peripheral vision. You're not going to, of course, it's not going to be the same experience as if you're looking directly at the person, um, but you are going to be able to pick on thing, pick up on things like if they're smiling or if they're looking off in a different direction. Um, and then I think it's okay too, that every, you know, after I speak, I will look down and just look at the people on the call. And, and then that's where you also see the reactions. It doesn't have to be nonstop eye contact. And in fact, mm -hmm. you know, it's good to take some breaks. Like in person, we're not just gonna be making intense eye contact with someone, you know, for the yeah. whole conversation. Look away, look down at the people um, on the screen. And I think um, I think that should give you enough signals to kind of interpret and, and understand how they're reacting to what you're saying. Nice. Yeah, that, that's good to know. You don't have to constantly be staring mm -hmm. at the camera. That can be a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know we only have about like five minutes left before we're heading over to Mary Ellen to wrap up the session. Uh -huh. So if you have any more questions, please drop them into the Q&A section. I see we have a couple more. Um, I also wanted to reiterate the handout that Lauren has put together for her session. So feel free to download it here. Um, but if you don't, we'll also be sending it out in the follow up email if you want to check it out there. Yes, these questions, so many questions. I love it. These are all amazing questions. Thank you everyone for, for chiming in. All right, let's move into our next one from Melissa. Is it ever all right to have an open-ended time frame for a meeting? Um, I would say no personally, but I guess it depends on on what the situation is. I, I've i never been in a meeting where someone has suggested that. Um, I imagine it would be um, less focused and less, less structured if you felt like you had all the time in the world. And, you know, one thing I like to say when um, talking about meetings is that, you know, a lot of people just schedule an hour long meeting because that's what they've always done or that's what they're used to. And you'll notice that if you schedule the hour, schedule the hour long meeting, the content will just take up the full hour. But if you schedule it for half an hour, people are more focused and they want to make sure they get all everything they need to in that half hour. So I think start off with a specific um, time frame if you can. There is, you know, work you can send asynchronously, maybe before um, to get to make the meeting time you do have in person um, more productive. So there's other techniques you can do like that um, if you want to kind of have more meeting time without having it be open-ended, have people do some work before, um, some work afterwards, async. Right. Okay, great. Well, I think we have time for just one more question here from Elisa. What is the best way to combine pre-recorded video content along with LinkedIn Live content? Any things you should keep in mind for best presenting? Mm, good question. Well, I think you can use pre-recorded in a number of ways, definitely to promote the LinkedIn Live event. Um, if you are, if you want to use Prezi video during your LinkedIn Live event, which, um, you know, 
different people have done before. Um, you can have your video embedded here. You can play your video. Um, again, it helps kind of add some variety, helps um, refocus people's attention. So I think that's an option as well. And then I believe all LinkedIn Lives get recorded. So sharing after the fact, of course, and taking clips. And I think you talked earlier in the panel session about um, repurposing videos. So being able to take clips and promote it and use it in different ways, um, I think is another uh, great idea to so just ensure that the, the video content keeps living on in, in different um, formats. Thank you, Lauren. And I mean, you had also mentioned you had another keynote and that one talks about LinkedIn and video presence. So yeah. at least I can definitely check out Lauren's website and look at that one as well. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, I think that we're about getting to the end here. Lauren, a lot of people are saying thank you so much. Great thank idea. You, everyone. Appreciate thank all you. your answers to the questions. So thank you again so much for being here. As I said, we're going to be moving over in about five minutes to Mary Ellen, where she's going to wrap it up. But Lauren, I wanted to pass the mic back to you and say, do you have any final thoughts to close out this session today? Um, I would just say that, you know, for any of you who feel like this might be overwhelming, just to take it step by step, I think everything I shared today, it's all completely doable by all of us. It just, you know, it takes a little bit of time and, and focus. Um, just reach out to me anytime on LinkedIn. If you have any questions or want me to take a look at anything that you've tried, happy to do that. And just thank you so much again for taking the time um, to join me today. I know everyone's time is very valuable these days. So just a big thank you to all of you. Great. Well, yeah. Thank you again. Thank you all so much for being here. And thank you for joining us for the Video Reimagined Summit. Um, Michael also mentioned that there will be prizes at the wrap-up event. So please head over there and thanks all. Bye. Thank you. Bye.